when you read such a long list, then it means you are old, <laughs> having a lot of experiences. Uh, I'm relatively not so experienced than the speakers before in this topic um, of curved and bent glass, but um, going through the world, seeing the development, I thought it might be useful to talk a little bit independent about the development. So I'm thankful to, to Adam and other speakers before that they showed some uh, figures and test results because I leave those things out, otherwise uh, it's too much in the time. Um, from my perspective, I, I worked 17 years in production and honestly speaking, the tempered glass surface quality has never improved. 30 years ago, we learned to make it better, but meanwhile, sometimes I believe it's not good enough for flat glass. And uh, opposite is that we have some companies who are really doing a good job and have really improved uh, also, especially with curved glass. And this is a, a big difference and a big gap. And I would like to encourage that the mass producers learn more about it. And also in standards, we have a big gap uh, and have little description, so it is done by some companies to develop it. Um, this shows uh, a building where you can see the anisotropies. Um, is uh, something that we discuss in the recent years. It could help um, to produce better, but we have now uh, some measurement systems coming up, but what we need is a device which can immediately control the operation and the furnaces. So here is still a lack for improvement, uh, but with, with it we can see also the quality issues we have. Uh, I only want to show very shortly these pictures. It's not curved glass, but to see where we come from often. And uh, sometimes people believe this is a design, but I think it's a lack of quality. And uh, I start with size. Um, in the recent 10 years, um, size matters most. Maybe other things come later or just now. And uh, when I was producing, I, I had the biggest factory in Germany under my control. I was fearing to go beyond six meters. Yeah, it's 20 years ago. Um, and I'm really happy that people had the power, and it is typical that these were not the biggest companies, to go beyond and try out what is possible. So uh, it will not take long, then we may have 21 and 24 meters. But if this makes sense, it's a different question. It is also not uh, really energy efficient, but for our lifestyle and life conditions, it makes sense for me. Uh, what is also very interesting is that these glasses now can not only uh, done in a width of 360 by Chinese float lines. We know in Europe we have 321. But in China, the first float line with 380 is running. And there's one who can produce four meter. It's very expensive because to change the float line, but it is possible. And four meter is an interesting figure, I would say, for some constructions. And uh, that is, here's the future. Uh, this is similar situation for, uh, I know that the figures are not exact, uh, because it should give only an impression how it uh, develops. Um, for curved glass, which is now in the recent years, uh, a development direction for smaller and wider radii and also for spherical uh, curvatures. So size was also in the beginning some key interest, but now it's more and more to have single solutions for different problems. This is a situation for super high and small radius tempered glass. Uh, the next picture shows uh, the Nanjing Apple stores. Uh, I think you are experts and aware about the many Apple stores which are not supplied by many companies, only by a few, who are really doing a good job. 
And uh, at that time, when this popped up, it probably was the biggest class, uh, but now it is something else. Um, I like this building, Manchester Town Hall. It is not big, but uh, whenever you see it, the surface quality is outstanding. This is one of the best I have ever seen. And um, I have to say that this is done by trial and error. Yeah? Optimize the furnace, optimize uh, the surface quality by many, many tests and doing it. And also uh, other suppliers did this in this way. It is still a, a way of trial and error. And I myself, when I started glass business, I was a coding specialist. And I remember well that I have used the coded glass and went down in the courtyard and checked it 100 times from every angle and uh, checked it in different buildings and learned a lot about practical issues. Um, this is maybe an interesting building, uh, not yet built. Uh, this will come for the Winter Games in Beijing. Um, the designer and this uh, government uh, supported want to have a, a feeling that the glass gives you uh, a design like snowflakes. Something we have not done before. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a, a big issue how to solve it. And the, the tests for it are running since a while. And um, so there is not only the curvature to optimize, and uh, to reduce also the thermal cracking for, for this kind of glass. Um, they developed, uh, or still are developing, a, a process to achieve the re reflection effect, what they wanted. Um, before this was a rendering, of course, and um, it is not 100% clear what will outcome. But what is very interesting is that we have those challenges and that we do it. Yeah? And that is what I, I like. Um, super arc lengths and small radius tempered curved glass is five years ago not really there, but now it seems common, but not in the wider range of, pro of producers, only a few. Uh, this is a very simple picture how you can use it. Uh, but it can be used in many ways. Interesting, I found this was a consideration in the discussion between a producer, developer, and architects. What should be uh, the really width of, of, a, of a glass, not only the length? And um, in this case, TNG North glass build a new furnace uh, for it. Uh, they can anyway uh, produce uh, curved glass uh, in convex and concave bending, so you can have every side uh, coated. And they have made at least the pressure, and that is amazing, that someone in China decided to make a float glass in four meter widths. Uh, this is a picture of such a furnace, and uh, of course, those furnaces are also commercially available, so it's something what other people can also do. Uh, this is a curved glass with ultra long arc lengths, and uh, this is another sector where it moves on. And recently, we had seen some examples on Bau, uh, which were exhibited, and I have to say, Sometimes I, I personally move to the glass and think it's float, yeah? but it is a tempered glass quality uh, or heat strengthened and laminated, and uh, the quality is compared to former years surprising. Um, I think everybody in this uh, sector is doing by trial and error. We saw it before also when uh, the discussion was about cold bent glass. It's a lot of trial and error and learning. But behind that is a serious attempt to test it, to check if it really uh, will fulfill or you run in a disaster. So um, test methods in 
common sense and uh, standards like we have for flat glass does not fit at the moment. So companies need to develop their own systems to find out how it works and how it behaves under different conditions. This concave and convex glass opens up uh, new options when you can code it on both sides. And you can see now more and more buildings uh, designed for such purpose. And also what we saw just before, a building like in Washington with these glasses. And uh, in this case, it's also concave and convex tempered. Uh, uh, with low E-glass, and uh, the building itself shall be very transparent. Um, and uh, we enter or in a new way uh, designing glass, and I am personally see a, a very good culture coming up that for those special uh, companies, the relations to architectures and designers is uh, more and more established. In former days, class industry and architects did not discuss so much. That has changed, luckily. Uh, this is another building uh, from Canada uh, where SOM was doing and where very, very close figures on demand for the quality was existing. And um, the optical quality you can see in this picture is excellent. Oops. The next one is a building from Beijing. It's called Waterfall. And some of the architecture is like a waterfall with very, very different glasses. And again, the, for the most of them, uh, tests were necessary to work out the different bending techniques and also to achieve closer uh, values, uh, better values. And the next picture shows it also. Uh, so there is, I don't want to go into detail. You may read it here. Um, it is, uh, every building is a task. Yeah? And right now, I see three to five companies in the world who are really doing those things very well and go on. That is good, but what I also would like to see that a broader range of good glass quality will be upcoming behind that. Here I have now an example which, was, uh, is, which is famous. That is the Nike flagship stores. Interesting here was that two buildings were done by two different suppliers, and uh, one in New York and one in Shanghai, uh, and with different techniques to, to try to achieve it. So one technique was slump bending, the other was chemical tempering. Um, I find it very interesting that this is also a competition of how to do it, the job and to optimize the different solutions. Here you see the designer and also the owner of uh, uh, or the, the uh, responsible person from Nike, he wanted to have in the facade just the design uh, of the Nike stripes and also the, the movement. Uh, this is a, a complete new solution, which I really found extremely interesting. Uh, and we can learn now from both solutions what is better. They, it's wrong to say this is better or this is better. Both have a positive and negative points. Yeah? And I have in here, in this case, a picture from Shanghai. Unfortunately, it didn't have the picture from New York. I would also like to show. Uh, but what I have seen, that to develop this class, uh, in this case, I saw it by North class, uh, that was a, a long, long way to go for trial and error, to check it, to prove it, to test it and to, to work it out. You can here get an impression uh, about uh, different methods um, to work it out. And 
of course, we cannot do those jobs if we don't have any uh, partner who pays also for the efforts, especially when you do it the first time. But the outcome is really great. And uh, the next picture, this is a Uhland Center for Contemporary Art in Beijing, in the Art Center. Um, also, we have here a double curved glass. And uh, this is not a big, big project, but they wanted to change the uh, existing building and have an eye catcher for the entrance area. And interestingly, they got, I don't know how much, but they got 10 times more visitors after they had this facade. Um, the last example here is um, I want to show uh, a job in China for the ceramic industry. The, uh, this type of uh, uh, China uh, is very, very traditional and very important for Chinese. And they want to build a similar building in China uh, as a museum. And uh, again, a lot of service effects uh, are in discussion which are not yet existing and have to, to be done. And uh, I think this is uh, more challenging, so specific project, than only high rise in size. So we should move now for more particular solutions and not only for size. Yeah? Uh, I made it short here. I gave only a short view to the uh, German, uh, European standard. When you read through, you find little what really helps those producers to make the job and, and uh, look for the tolerances. So here is a big gap in doing standards and doing products. And uh, the companies can only follow up their own track by trial and error. Uh, here I try to give a little bit of view to the change of the uh, different uh, values for uh, a time period of 10 years. And you can see that there is a big change. Uh, let me see pointer. When you see, OK, 10 years ago, uh, and what has been achieved in the next phases yeah, um, over the time. Yeah? And uh, you see it for here for single panel curved tempered glass. The next is uh, uh, with one radius. Um, you see also the figures coming up over the 10 years. And what we achieved meanwhile is extraordinary. Yeah? I don't have the total figures from everyone. Yeah? But it should give you a feeling for the way we are going and that there is really a value. The next is for, uh, for this type of classes. Again, you can see there is a big improvement possible. Yeah? And, but there is nothing fixed by a standard. This is only a question about discussing it with the client. And then you are in, dis in discussion with warranty points and uh, then fin finance point. But in such a development phase, you need also a little bit space to survive. <laughs> here we have a 3D curved glass. Also here we have uh, made progress. And, uh, but in the EN standard also you cannot find any uh, real advice you can use. OK, only to give a last picture here. Um, I, I wait for these multi curved glass of uh, big size and also uh, for the 3D curved glass for the Apple IFC. Whoever is doing it with very, very uh, flat uh, uh, or very big radius. And uh, thanks to the speaker before, he pointed out uh, about insulating glass. For energy reason, energy saving reason, we will have more and more construction now coming up with insulating glass versions. 
So we have really to work out better how we can keep the good optical quality and surface quality even for insulating glass. And uh, the pressure will be bigger to bring up solutions uh, in double or even triple uh, glazed uh, versions. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you. So Helmut, many thanks for your presentation. I think everyone over here um, appreciates your long experience in the kind of topic, even the audience interest actually picked up. Um, so are there any questions from the audience? Otherwise, I would start with the first question. I mean, um, looking at what you presented, um, it's a lot of also, it's a lot of um, education is, I would guess, to actually go to the glass processor, um, find adjust the tempering line. Do you think that this goes back to a kind of craftsmanship to adjust the tempering line to optimize it? Or what's your, what's the kind of best way? Is it kind of um, education or um, what's the kind of magic way behind getting this curved glass perfectly so good? There is not a perfect answer, yeah, because um, as an example, when you produce on such level, you may use an 18 meter coder for less than 100,000 square meter glass a year. So that does not pay back in normal ranges. Yeah? And um, you have to work so often and need a lot of time to improve uh, the machine and the process that you cannot think at the same time about real productivity development. Um, your heart must be 100% on the side of quality. What I, s I see a problem generally in our industry is that we are so much split. Here is a machine provider, here is a glass provider, here provides someone coatings, and then the specialist who can make something out of the glass, and even facade and windows is separate. Yeah? Not to talk about sealants and other things. Um, we need a better collaboration for those developments. Something is going up, yeah? but still uh, too little. And when you think about furnace technology as a startup, then I, I really consider it necessary that on long term, furnace and process and glass need to be in one hand. You can be faster, you can give back the, your know-how immediately and so on. And, um, and I saw it honestly for TNG North Glass who have started as a furnace supplier and much later they produced good glass. And from this effect to produce good glass and the power of the uh, leader there, that he wants only the best glass, they learned a lot. So they increased also their business for furnaces. Yeah? And um, basically, uh, this gives them much more learning effect over the time. Yeah? It's, it's, it was also, at my time, very difficult to go to the machine supplier and explain all the details. Uh, in other areas where, for instance, North Glass had not the occasion uh, to have the machine with them, um, they have lengthy discussion with the machine, machine supplier. Uh, simple things like uh, a drying uh, drop on the glass over 18 meter, what makes a waste later out of it. So how to avoid every single drop? Zero failure discussions. Yeah? And, uh, all the machine suppliers are used to be mass producer at least. They want to sell many machines, not the outstanding one. And like the price with a normal IG and such special classes, the range is so big also for the machine prices. And it's hard to find machine suppliers who are willing to go the extra mile. Yeah? So are there any more questions from the audience? Otherwise, I would raise just one last question, Helmut. Um, in one of your slides, you've shown um, 300 megapascal strength um, of the glass. I would guess this is related to kind of chemically tempered glass. Yeah. So referring to actually curved glass, would you see the future in the traditional um, hot tempering process or the kind of chemical tempering? What do you kind of guess what's going to be the future brings? For me, the future brings thin glass. 
that is uh, the first issue. And I'm doing a lot of research for vacuum glass. And in vacuum glass, uh, the, the load can be taken by both glasses. So if you have 4-4, four, four, then it's like an 8 millimeter glass. And it should be anyway tempered or heat strengthened. And we should try even there to go down to 2 millimeter glass and so. And as more you go to thinner glass, as more uh, chemical tempering is coming in the game. Yeah? This is a more general view. If you go to to single solution, it really depends. Like we see in this case with Nike, uh, even mold bending can bring uh, up, uh, uh, slump bending, sorry, can bring up uh, a very good result. Yeah, it, it's, it's not an answer to say that is a clear trend to chemical tempering. But what is clear, as thinner we produce, as more chemical tempering can come up. And the second answer is, it is a question about the glass service. Yeah? How good is a glass service? Because the depth of chem uh, of, uh, for chemical uh, tempering is, of course, small. And if you have uh, a risk for damages which goes beyond, then uh, heat-tempered uh, glass certainly is then stronger and better. Um, that heat tempering will uh, go away, I don't believe. It will still be there. Yeah. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao.